Hi everybody, Mark the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a very simple but very effective fly for you. This is Alan Overgaard's Sandstorm. It's for coastal sea trout um, in Denmark but I mean it'll catch inshore species all about the world really. Um, and you might adjust the hook, something stronger depending on where you are but it's just a very good fly. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the monthly fly tying classes, the members only content, and be entered into the monthly giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button, like the video, share the video, leave a comment below, that all helps the channel to grow. Right, I've got my hook in my vise, this is an Arex Trout Predator light, and this is a size 1 I'm tying, um, obviously tie it in a size that suits your fishing. Um, and I've run on just some tan thread that's, was it shuni? 6 -0. And I'm going to get some Grizzly Craft fur, and that's my tail. And it'll also be the collar of the fly. So I'm just going to get a, a wee bunch. Doesn't need to be super heavy, but you want a decent amount. Now, before I tie it in, obviously, I'm going to take away all the underfur and the wee short fibres, and then I'll have a look at it, see how it lines up. That's not bad. Take away the really long fibres there that were in there. And I'll we'll measure it up, shank length, hook length, thereabouts. Just get that tied in nice and secure. Right, and so my tail starts at the barb. And then obviously, if you always use the same measure, you know, whatever you decide you like, right? If you always use the same measurement, your flies will always be in proportion as you got them down the sizes, right? So if I tie, tie a one, and it's, that was about a, nearly a hook length. Tie a four, nearly a hook length, this they, they sort of scale down, right? Um, so the body is, the original was, I believe, semi-seal and golden china. But any kind of light, sort of translucent, tanny dubbing will do. Right, something that will kind of represent the bit, the belly of the goby, which is a kind of pale, pale colour. I'm going to come in and just uh, dub this one. And I'm going to build a bit of a taper. Come back. Yeah, a bit more. A wee bit of flash in this dubbing as well. Just build that up. And I've got about two thirds of the shank there. Make it nice and long so I've got plenty of working room. And take a couple of wraps around it so that I close the loop. Give me a bit of wax there. Now I, I wax the, the loop just for it's, it's for the working really. It's no it's not gonna be doing anything once the fly's fishing, it's just it makes it easier to work with at the moment. spinner in and then I've got the same craft for I've already put it in a clip just for speed on the video let's get that in close the loop and then sort of spread it out you don't want it very heavy 
well, I mean, you might. It's up to you again. You can, you can tie them heavier, bulkier. Um, and as usual, I've taken the most of the under fur out. I'm just spreading this so I get a nice kind of loose or sparse, I should say, really, rather than loose um, rope. And I'll spin it up. And I like to get plenty of spins in, you know what, uh, like, I want it to be really tight, really well gripped, and it's the, I don't know, the torsion is what's gripping the stuff, right, no the wax, um, but the wax stops it falling out and all that when when you're getting ready to spin it. Now I can probably pull a fibre here. So I'll spin it a bit more. Should be able to grab that and that's nice. And it's quite long so I'll just use the rotary just to eat up the empty thread. And I like to do that. If you give yourself, on a bigger fly, if you give yourself the space to work it makes it much easier to get the loop in properly and you just use up the bare thread so I'll just start now winding this little hackle I'll just fold it as I go I start giving myself a collar and head that's going to push a bit of water and give me the, the bait fish um, profile you know, I mean, this could be any number of wee, wee bait fish, um, gobies, and what have you. Now, I'm looking a wee bit kind of tangled up here, so I'm going to stop and just come in with the brush again just to free it. It'll, it'll come loose better at the moment than if I finish the fly and then try to get in. It'll take more effort to do and it might not actually be able to come free the same so I'm just going to use this up I'll get as much as I need uh, don't want too much don't want it to be too bulky I like a wee sort of slim profile just stop there catch it off I mean, I could maybe uh, force that in, but there's no need to. So, we'll just before I fold it back, we'll just sort of strip the worst of that out and fold it back. Come it close. Get the the craft for fluff everywhere but just sweep everything back and tidy up build this up a proportionate head that you like that's a nice shape there I quite like that swim it's full of movement and then it's just a case of finishing and varnishing more or less you can, you can give it another brush if you want, um, I'll just show you actually just because it will lift it a wee bit, open it, again you could use your velcro as well, but and then I'll just roll it back, I mean obviously it will open and move when you're fishing it but you get the general shape. Trim that away. Just varnish. I just use varnish, I don't use glue or nothing. In the salt water, varnishes or head cement, if you might call it that, is as good as anything. 
for these type of flies, it's not, you don't need a big epoxy head, you're not holding eyes on or nothing. So there you go, that's the sandstorm, simple, material light, <sighs> absolute fish catcher, catches it, catches, catches sea trout and as I say, I mean, I know there's guys in Australia using for the bream and the jacks, the mangrove jacks and that, um, very very good pattern. So, I hope you thigh some up and I hope you catch some fish in it. Tight lines guys, bye.